Okay, so we have another geometric sequence we're looking at, but this time we're going to be talking about infinite um, geometric sequences. So we want to find out the value of the series if we keep on adding these terms to infinity. And it turns out there's actually a formula for this. We're going to look at this. But first, let's try and understand this series. So to characterize this, we look at the first term. So a equals 3. And then the ratio between terms, we see that we're dividing by 2 every time. So 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. And if we divide this by 2 again, we get 0 0.75 and carry on until infinity. So our ratio is we're multiplying by a half, which is the same as dividing by 2. So this kind of defines the geometric sequence underneath the series. And then the series, its value is just taken by adding all these terms up. And there's actually a formula for this. So a general formula, given initial term a and ratio r, if I write this as s infinity, this turns out to be a over 1 minus r. I've got another video de uh, deriving that. We're not going to do that here. We're just going to look at using this formula. But it's important that this formula is only true when r is between 1 and minus 1. So the size of r has to be strictly less than 1. And this is really important because if r isn't in this range, then our series isn't going to converge. And this kind of makes sense because the terms would just be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the sum would diverge to infinity. But for this series, we see we fall into this case because r is a half, so it's in this range. And we can actually use this formula. So let's work out the value of this series. So s equals, just plugging these numbers in, we have 3 over 1 minus a half. And that's the same as 3 over a half. So dividing by a fraction, we can just flip it and multiply. So 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. And this is quite amazing because we're adding infinite number of terms and they get progressively smaller. They get very, you know, lots of decimals, lots of fractions, not very nice, but adding all these terms together, we get a nice whole number. We get six, which is quite amazing. So this is quite a very beautiful formula and it's good to know how to use it. So now we're just going to look at a bit of a harder problem using this formula just to make sure we understand it. So I'm just going to wipe this up and clear up a bit of space. Okay, so this problem is quite simple actually. We're just told two bits of information. We're told that the first term in some geometric sequence is equal to 10, and we're told that the sum of all of its terms is equal to 30. And then the question is to find out the ratio. And it's actually quite simple because we have this formula that we were looking at just a second ago. The sum to infinity, this is equal to a divided by 1 minus r. So we have three unknowns here. And we're given two of them right here. So we just need to solve this for r. So let's just plug that in. 30 equals a, which is 10, divided by 1 minus r. And so we can just cross multiply. 30 times 1 minus r equals 10. And then I can divide by 30 on both sides. We have 1 minus r equals 10 over 30. And this simplifies as just 1 third. So then let's just finally solve for r. I'm just going to move the r onto that side. So we have 1 equals 1 over 3 plus r. And then that solves quite simply as 1 minus a third, which is equal to 2 over 3. So that's just a good exercise just to make sure we know how to use this. It tells us that if our initial term is 10 and the sum is 30, then our ratio is 2 thirds. And it's good because this is less than 1, so it actually satisfies our condition that we can use this formula. So I've got one more problem, it's a bit harder, and we're going to look at it now. Okay, so for this final problem, it's a bit trickier, so we need to think a bit more carefully. We are told that the sum of the first four terms in some geometric sequence is equal to 15. So if we add the first four terms, we get 15. And if we add all the terms in this series to infinity, this sum is 16. And then from this information, we need to work out what the possible values for R are, the common ratio. So let's start off by deciphering this. I'm just going to write S4 as the sum of the first four terms. This equals 15. And remember the, the general form for this is just A plus A times R plus A times R squared plus A times R cubed. So this is the first four terms in this series. And remember there's a formula for this. So we can write this using sigma notation as well. This is a sum from K equals 1 up to 4 because we have four terms. And we just need to write the formula for the general term. So this is a times r to k minus 1. And if you remember the formula, I'll just write it here just to uh, refresh your memory for the nth term. 
the sum for the first n terms is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. So you want to use this applied to n equals 4, so the first four terms. And this is just a times 1 minus r to the power of 4 divided by 1 minus r. So we don't actually know what a and r are yet, so we're going to try and find this out with the second bit of information. So this tells us that the sum to infinity is 16, and I can interpret that as writing s infinity equals 16. And remember, there's a formula for this. And so this is just adding all the terms. So I can write in sigma notation as k equals 1 up to infinity of a times r to k minus 1. So this is just notation, but there's a formula for this, and this is a over 1 minus r. So again, we don't know what a and r are. But the idea is we have these two equations and we can try and manipulate them to actually find out what r is. So we have this stuff is equal to 15 and this stuff is equal to 16. So what we can do is we can actually divide one of these values by the other. So let's do s4 divided by s infinity. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to divide it by this one. So we get a times 1 minus r to the power of 4 over 1 minus r. And to divide this fraction, we can just uh, flip it and multiply. So we have 1 minus r over a. And the reason we did that is because this is going to cancel with this, the 1 minus r, and also the a's are going to cancel. So this whole thing equals 1 minus r to the power of 4. And what's nice is that we actually have numbers for this left-hand side. We were told that s4 equals 15, s infinity equals 16. So this equals exactly 15 divided by 16. And this is exactly something we can solve. So I'm just going to go down here. We have r to the power of 4. If I bring this over to this side and subtract this off, this comes out as 1 over 16. And that's 1 minus 15 over 16. And then we need to take the fourth root. So luckily, 16 is uh, a fourth power. It's 2 to the power of 4. So when we take the fourth root, we get, oh, I need to write this somewhere else. So we get that r equals 1 over 2 because if we bring this to the power of 4, then we get 1 over 16. But we need to be a bit careful because we need to actually consider both the positive and the negative solution to this. Because if we raise minus a half to the power of 4, we also get minus six, uh, plus 16, 1 over 16, sorry. So both the plus and negative versions of a half are solutions. So this is the answer to this first question. So um, when r equals plus or minus a half, we get a geometric sequence. And we can actually go a bit further. So we found out what r is. We don't know what a is yet. But if we just think about evaluating one of these numbers into one of these equations, we can actually work out the corresponding values of a. So if I just go up here, if I've got space, let's just consider what happens if r equals a half plus a half. Then we can just sub it into this formula here because we have it equals 16. We have the value of r. And we're going to get to the value of a. So we have 16 equals a over 1 minus r, which is a half, and then this comes out to 1 minus a half, and then we can just multiply that up, and we get a equals 8. So this tells us that if our ratio is a half for a geometric series that satisfies these two conditions, then our starting point must be 8. And we can actually do something very similar if r is uh, the minus solution. So if, if r equals minus a half, then we can again use this formula. We have 16 equals a over 1 plus a half this time because the double negatives cancel. And then this simplifies to 3 over 2 on the bottom. And if you multiply that up, that's going to uh, simplify to a equals, not 32, <laughs> a equals 24. So this is what's going to solve. So if r equals minus a half, it, a has to be equal to 24. The first term has to be equal to 24 so that we satisfy these conditions and the series is geometric. So this is kind of a little bonus question just to uh, understand how to find the other value, the initial term. But the main part of this question was to find out the ratio and essentially we just uh, wrote the formulas out for the finite series and wrote the formulas out for the infinite series and then we just divided by one, one by the other to work out what r was. So this is our solution.